You know this girl? She's a bumblebee. Today's pollinator is bumblebee. There she is. So I am out and about and I uh, had a meeting and across the street from where I had this meeting there's this huge bed of lambs here. Let's bring it all into focus. And it is buzzing. I'm Amy Landers with Gardens That Matter, where we help families create beautiful, bountiful gardens together, and it is pollinator time. This week and next week we are talking about pollinators, celebrating pollinators, and highlighting some amazing ones. Today, bumblebees. And since I found them on lamb's ear, let's talk about lamb's ear, because it's a great plant for your garden. It is so much fun and so soft to touch that it's just, just an exciting one. I'm like so distracted because there's so many, so many bumblebees here. Um, let's see if I can kind of <laughs> talk right next to this one. Can you see it working? Oh, they're amazing. So bumblebees are a native bee. They are native to North America. Um, they're native to lots of parts of the world, but let's talk about North America. So here in the U.S., we've got about 45 species of bumblebee. Let's see if this, I don't know if she's still in the frame. Oh yeah, here we go. And in the eastern U.S. where I live, there's about 27 different species. So just sitting here watching these guys on the lamb's ear, I see three or four different shapes and sizes and little bit different colors. And so I'm sure there's multiple species here. I don't know my bumblebees well enough to identify them. I'd have to take pictures, I'm sure. But yeah, this lamb's ear is just buzzing with them. So bumblebees have a really cool life cycle. Um, and so let me tell you a little bit about that. They are not solitary bees. Many of our native bees are solitary bees, but these are bees that live in a colony. They're not as big of a colony as a, as a honeybee. A honeybee would have about, gosh, tens of thousands of bees, about, about tens of thousands. But um, the biggest bumblebee colonies are about 300 bees, but still that's a pretty good size hive. And so how, um, how do we not see these more often, right? I don't know that I've ever seen a bumblebee um, nest that I've like come across. Well, they tend to be hidden away. They can be underground. They might be in like thick clumps of grass. And what happens is the queen overwinters. All the other bees in the colony die. Um, they don't live through the winter, but the queen um, actually, the old queen lays, lays an egg and like her, it, the the bees take care of it and then it overwinters and the new new queen hatches in the spring and goes out and collects nectar and pollen um really looking for pollen because she needs to feed her brood and so that queen will raise um a round of young bees wor worker bees and then the queen gets to sit back and just lay eggs all the time and all those worker bees go out and and are doing the foraging so somebody's building nearby, sorry if you can hear that. But yeah, so the, so the queen bee is who you might see early in spring. If you see a bumblebee out early in spring, um, that would be a queen bee. But this lady, I'm sure, is a worker bee that is part of a colony. So she's collecting nectar and pollen to take back and feed that queen and feed the developing brood. Bumblebees are amazing. They're fantastic pollinators. You can just see like from their heft, they can just get into just about any flower. <laughs> like, like even a flower that's more of something that like a hummingbird might get into, they can just force their way in there. Let's see if I can get her in there again. They can just force their way in there. <laughs> They're amazing. Um, so let's say, let's talk a little bit about this plant that we see them on. Now, in general, native plants are gonna be your best bet for encouraging native pollinators, but there are some exotic plants that are fun to have in the garden and can also still feed pollinators really well. And this is one of them. So this is Stachys Byzantina, uh, Byzantia. Oh, I'm probably saying that completely wrong. Byzantina, yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> so it's lamb's quarters. So let's take a little bit of a closer look. I know it's so bright out here, but I think we'll try to get the, the balance. There we go, a little bit better. Not quite so bright on you. So you can see that lovely silvery green leaf and it is so soft so soft you can actually I haven't done this but you can use them as a bandage like tie them onto your finger if you got a boo-boo on your finger so what fun so kids love these they're very interesting they're beautiful in the garden they're beautiful color um, and then they put up these big flower stalks and they're in the mint family so they have a square stem if you feel them they have a square stem they're in the lamaceae family and then uh, put up these big mint flower type stalks and feed all kinds of pollinators. Let's see if I can get it to focus up close for you. So look at that. Really lovely flower stalk. I know that's kind of blurry. It's bright out here. It's hard for me to see the, the screen to make sure that it's in focus. So yeah, so do you have lamb's quarter in your garden? Tell me in the comments. Do you see bumblebees in your garden? Tell me in the comments. We are going to be continuing to highlight different pollinators this week, so if you have a favorite, tell me about that. I will come back and read the comments, um, and I love to hear about what you love to grow and see and encourage in your garden. And if you want to encourage more pollinators in your garden, I invite you to join us. We're doing a workshop. Um, it's going to be a free online workshop. It's on Friday, June 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern about how to create your own pollinator paradise. We'll have a menu for you to create your own pollinator paradise. And there's a link for that in the description of this video. I'd love to have you join me. All right, I'm going to flip you guys around and uh, stalk a few more bumblebees. And until I see you again, happy gardening.